called Tornio. A couple of things I want to show you around the outside and then I want to get out of the wind and uh, show you some of the cool stuff on the inside because that's where it's really at. So for starters, it's got a really cool grill and this is something Ford's been doing across their model ranges is their design, the, the layout of the grills looks really cool. This is the premium spec Tornio. It's got the two liter diesel engine in it, produces 136 kilowatts. And so you get the chrome grill on the outside, the fog lights at the bottom, the LED lights over there. Um, and it actually looks really cool from the front. The wing mirrors are really cool as well. There's sort of two sets of, of mirror over here where you've got a regular mirror and then a really wide mirror. Um, having driven this a couple of thousand kilometers around the country, I can tell you that this bottom mirror is actually really useful. Especially if you're reversing, gives you extra visibility, just gives you a wider field of view. And then if you look at the bottom here, you'll see there's actually an indicator over there. So for other vehicles on the road, they can see the indicator at the bottom that flashes when you indicate you have better visibility across the mirror. That's really clear. It also warns you if you're changing lanes and there's another car right in the lane next to you. The side here, like with most vans, you have the fuel filler cap. You have to actually open the passenger door to be able to access the fuel filler cap over there. 17 inch mags which help the vehicle look really nice. One of the cool features of the Tornio is this step over here which makes it a lot easier to get into the actual Tornio and you don't have to step all the way up to the top there you can step on that and get right into the car. Around the back you have quite a large light cluster here which looks really cool but is really functional as well just gives you better visibility on the road. Obviously the Ford Tornio badging over there and then this huge ass boot What's there? space on the back is actually really good one thing that the Tornio could do with over here is um, to actually have this thing powered it's quite heavy there's a leather strap over here you can pull on to close it but it's really heavy and just takes takes a bit of work to actually get it closed down here you have the reverse angle camera which is an optional extra and you also have the tow bar there which is also an optional extra. Right, so let's get out of the wind and I can show you some of the really cool stuff inside the Tornio. One thing that is a little bit strange is you have the door handle over there and then you have the key over here. So if you wanted to manually unlock this, it's not, I mean normally it's like built in over there and on the Tornio it's just this round blob stuck on the side of the door. That's, that's, that's a bit weird. Let's get out of the wind and um, I'll show you some of the cool stuff on the inside of the Tornia. And I actually want to start on the door. So there's a compartment over there. There's a compartment over there. You can see it's my wallet. That's quite a big slot for, this is a 500ml Coke bottle. That can comfortably hold a big thing. There's a compartment over here with the divider and a compartment over there. Your door lock and opening, your window thing, a little coin thing over there. You have a cup holder over here. You have a huge ass bottle holder there. Again, that's a 500 ml bottle. You can comfortably get like a one liter water bottle in there. So around the door, there's a lot of space you can pack stuff. There's space for wallets, bottles, cups, you name it, it's in there. If you're gonna go on long road trips, that's really, really useful. So around the front, you've got a multifunctional steering wheel that controls the on-screen display over there. This controls all your cruise control. It does have radar guided cruise control or adaptive cruise control, um, which is really cool and really useful on the wrong road. There's no sort of massive digital display there. You just have this mono trip computer over there, which is absolutely fine. Um, air vents on either side. Your function buttons over here, traction control. Modes only allow a normal mode and an eco mode. Those are the two modes you get in the car. And then obviously your park sensors over there. In this bin and compartment over here, you have some more cup holders and some more space for stuff over there. And there's space over here. So like you have no shortage of cup holders. And then on the passenger side, like the driver's side, you have a bottle holder over there, similar sort of cup holders. And one thing that's interesting about the front here is that there's a single USB port and obviously a 12 volt socket over there. So you can charge devices, but there's only one port to kind of plug a phone in the front, despite there being about six ports in the back. Another cool feature in this car, which is an optional extra, is this socket over here, which is actually really useful. I managed to, on our road trip, plug something in there, put on a multi-plug, and actually plug in a whole bunch of stuff in there. It only gives you 150 watts, but if you're charging batteries and drones and cameras and stuff like that, more than enough. And then in the back where this differs from a combi or a h1 is that the seats are actually individual seats it's not a bench and as individual seats they can fold down individually if you fold the middle one down it actually gives you cup holders which makes this really versatile because as a passenger in the back 
you actually have an armrest here, you have cup holders, not that they're terribly deep, but they're there, it's useful. It also makes it easier for packing stuff, you don't have to fold the whole bench down, you can just fold one seat down or two seats down and put some stuff through if you need to. Um, the packing space in the back here is just really versatile. The same goes for this row of seats. You'll see that they're actually facing me at the moment and they can be adjusted. You can take the seat out and you can make the seat face backwards or turn it around and face forwards. This middle seat has the same function. It pops down like that and cup holders over here. Again, making it really useful and really versatile for anybody in the back. The windows at the back are pretty standard van windows. Everybody seems to do this. You kind of have a clip there that releases it and then the window pops open a little bit. Some of the vans like the Combi and so on would slide open but also only give you a small amount. You have a shield over here and a shield at the back over here as well for a little bit of privacy. As I mentioned earlier, you have USB ports over there, you have a cup holder over there. On this side of the van, you have USB ports as well. So there's quite a healthy sprinkling of USB ports around the van. Um, you also have climate control, individual climate control at the back here. It's adjusted by these knobs. You can set the fan speed and your temperature. It comes out of these vents in the roof. There's three of them here and three of them over there. So all in all, the back of this car is actually really well laid out and it's an incredibly comfortable place to be as a passenger. Not that I've been a passenger in the back here because I've nobody to drive for me. Seating arrangements are versatile. Seats can face either way. You can get six people in here comfortably either facing each other or facing forward. You have these armrests in the middle. It's just been incredibly well thought out. Right, so how does the Tornio drive? Um, I did quite a lot of mileage on this car over the weekend. We've done about 1400 kilometers so far. Uh, it's equipped, as I said, with a two liter diesel engine. It's the same engine that they put in the Ranger and the Everest. So it's not a new engine. It produces 136 kilowatts and 415 Newton meters of torque, which is pretty standard actually for a van like this. It is diesel and um, it goes really nicely. I've heard a couple of people complain about the gearbox doing a little bit of hunting. To be honest, I've had no drama with the gearbox. I've actually thought the gearbox is is really good. Um, it lumbers a little bit on the corners, but it is a damn van. It's big. But the throttle, especially when it's empty like this, throttle super responsive. We did pack up quite a bit in the car, not heavily loaded, and we didn't put in a ton of people. But it, um, it did really well on the open road. It's comfortable to overtake. Um, the adaptive cruise control is particularly useful on the open road. So this van, good power, adaptive cruise control, tons of space, comfortable in the back, comfortable in the front, the seats in the front are great, uh, your driving position is great, steering is great, um, it does Apple CarPlay and Android Auto depending on what you want, gearbox selection is good, this car is really comfortable to drive especially on long trips. Um, the whole mirror situation is really cool as well. So all in all I really enjoyed driving around in this in this Tornio. I think Ford have absolutely nailed it. The Tornio comes in, this is the premium model. There's probably about 20 or 30 grand's worth of optional extras. Like I showed you that plug on the floor is optional extra. The reverse angle camera is an optional extra. All that stuff comes in. The adaptive cruise control is an optional extra. All that stuff's probably gonna set you back about 20 or 30 grand. So I've driven H1s and I've driven Caravels and I've not driven the Merc yet. Um, hint, hint, Mercedes. And um, this Tornio, I think, is punching above its weight. Uh, what you're getting, everything you get in this car, the price you get it at is, is an absolute bargain. If you're a fan of Ford and you're looking for a, a sizable family car that's really versatile, then um, I, would, I would strongly consider looking at the Tornio. Thanks for watching. Um, please smash that subscribe button below. Uh, it'll mean the world to me, and I'll see you in the next one.